it up a slam, ground and pound. He was done. Uh, I'm interested to see if uh, these these little uh, leg takes down and again we got that. My name is Kim Sugarfree Couture, and I weigh in at 150 pounds for this fight. Um, I live in Las Vegas, Nevada, and uh, I've been fighting for about seven years, training for nine years, and uh, I love the competition, and uh, I love how real it is. It's very real and raw, and it's hard, and uh, I enjoy learning something that's very tough, especially for women. It's, uh, it's very hard to find other women uh, training partners. Um, usually I'm the smallest one in the group, the only female. Um, guys take it easy on you and some guys go harder on you. You know, uh, some guys don't want you in the gym. So you deal with a lot of ego, a lot of personality, and uh, it's hard to find the right coach, you know, a good fit and people that you can trust and uh, they're gonna protect you so you don't get injured in practice. Um, and it's, you know, it's hard on all of our bodies, not just women, but men in general. And, uh, you know, women tend to be more emotional, so they handle the stress and pressure and injuries differently. Um, I've been fortunate to, to handle it you know, fairly well. Um, and right now I have a very good support system around me. I think that in the beginning I was one of the first ones to start trying to open those doors. And uh, it was more difficult back in the day. Um, people put us on cards to be like the circus show, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I don't think people realized that women were very, very technical and, um, and just as tough, if not tougher. We were the most exciting fights on the card and now, uh, now it seems that everybody has picked up on that and really enjoys watching the women because they know it's going to be a good fight. They always deliver. Well, I know him personally, I know Dana personally, and I know that Ronda really changed his mind. When, when he met Ronda Rousey and he watched her training with the Diaz brothers and uh, watched her throwing some of these 200 pound men around like it was no big deal, um, I think he second guessed his decision. And uh, learning the history of her with the Olympics and how many other fighters out there had that Olympic background like uh, Sarah McMahon. Um, I think it kind of opened his eyes. He always said that he didn't think there was depth in a lot of women fighters. I always felt like there wasn't a lot of depth either. Um, but there just wasn't a platform. Nobody knew who these women were around the country because they weren't being televised. So the farther he dug, uh, he found out that there was some good talent out there that had a background in either boxing or Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, wrestling. And uh, obviously when he opened the floodgates, everybody showed up. Um, down here in Mexico, now hopefully everybody wants to learn wrestling, wants to learn jiu-jitsu, and wants to get their Muay Thai under their belt and become more well-rounded because boxing has been the dominant sport here. And we in America, we admire and look up to Mexican boxers. They're tough, they're, they're good, and I think um, just cross-training with people is how you learn. So I expect the talent to get even stronger and I expect to see more women in the Olympics in sports like boxing and wrestling, judo, jiu-jitsu. I don't think jiu is in there yet, but it should be. Um, so I think uh, young girls that I see training now, a lot more little girls and parents are gonna start putting their kids in, learning at a very small age. What kind of sacrifice do you make to be like you are right now? Well, it's definitely been a sacrifice. I'm a mom and uh, I've had two or three jobs going at one time. And uh, just making ends meet, making sure my kid gets to school, picked up from school, whatever else he has to go to, juggling two or three practices a day, making sure you're getting enough food in you, um, taking care of the household. I've ran my own businesses. It's, it's a lot of balls in the air to juggle. And, um, and then you're dealing with injuries. So you're out, you're back and forth to the doctor and the chiropractor and sitting in an ice bath and hot tub and swimming and it's a lot to juggle. You spend a lot of time driving from place to place. So it's definitely, it's a full commitment and um, I take it very seriously. I've had some pretty severe injuries and um, 
you know, you find out very quickly once you're punched in the face and once you deal with some injuries if you really want to be in there and fighting or not. My goal is to prove to myself uh, first and foremost that I can overcome adversity. Uh, I've been through a lot and especially with the injuries and a, a major public divorce that I went to, went through, you know, proving to myself that uh, I'm stronger than everything else that's tried to take me out. So, you know, going through some hard times and really not having a lot of support and, and people not understanding my passion and why I do what I do, it's kind of been therapeutic for me to do this. And at the same time, now I want to prove to myself that I'm good and that I have been learning everything that I needed to know to be one of the top fighters and at least go down as one of the, the pioneers that helped uh, pave the way for all these young girls to come up and really, really shine. You're a woman, I'm a woman, and uh, it's our time to shine. It, it's, it's nice that I've been able to stay in here long enough to see it come around. We're not the circus show anymore. You know, moving up to a main event. I have been main event a couple other times in smaller shows. Uh, one was an all-woman show, and then another show was in uh, another small town. Um, I've always been co-main event, and for me, I've always been under a lot of pressure, so that doesn't bother me at all. Um, I take it as an honor, and I'm going to go in there and perform, put on a good show. It's going to be a good main event. Well, I fought, like I said, I fought in Sonora before, and I did some appearances and commentating in Mexicali. And when I fought in Sonora, Javier Torres was the main event. I was the co-main event. And when he said he was fighting down here, I trust him. He's my friend. And I had an amazing experience in the other two cities. So I was treated really well. The food was amazing. And I had a good experience. So um, I looked forward to coming back. And for the opportunity, I'm grateful. Yeah. I think I'm probably one of the most misunderstood people in the sport. Um, usually when people don't like me or have something bad to say, they've never even met me. Or if you ask somebody why they don't like me, they don't even know. <laughs> you know, um, anybody that I've ever touched or that has spent time with me, those are the people that are supporting me. And um, they're always there for me. Um, I cherish friendships. And uh, I think the people that are around me know that I love this sport. I live for this sport. I've, I've managed, I've commentated, I've put shows on myself in Las Vegas. Um, people call me all the time to help, help them get fights. You know, it's my life, as busy as I am. Um, I was doing the sport before I met my ex-husband, which a lot of people didn't know. And uh, a lot of the big guys in, in the UFC were my friends before I even met him. So people tend to just try to say I'm my ex-husband's ex-wife. and. Uh, I wish they would take the time to get to know me because they'd find out that there's a lot more there. You know. Hi, this is Kim, Sugar Free Couture. Watch RDC MMA on YouTube.